In this visit, I'll talk about serum sodium and what the blood test means. Sodium is an element of table salt. Table salt is sodium chloride, and sodium chloride is present in the body. The serum sodium is measured in the Comprehensive Metabolic Profile, a series of blood tests. Sodium is important because sodium balance, the amount of sodium the body takes in from eating and drinking and excretes through the kidneys, is critical for the regulation of body water balance. The normal serum sodium is 135 to 145 millimoles per liter. A low serum sodium is less than 135. It's usually due to water retention rather than to sodium deficiency. The symptoms of low sodium are nausea, headache, fatigue, confusion, and if the serum sodium is very low, seizures. A high serum sodium is greater than 145. This is usually due to excess water loss rather than to too much sodium intake. The symptoms are much the same as those of too low sodium. The causes of low sodium include congestive heart failure, nephrotic syndrome, cirrhosis, kidney failure, and the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, SIADH. SIADH is an endocrine problem in which too much of a hormone, ADH, is produced. Additional causes of a low serum sodium include hypothyroidism, aldosterone deficiency, and cortisol deficiency. Aldosterone deficiency and cortisol deficiency are both hormone problems. Low sodium can be due to sodium loss from vomiting and diarrhea or sweating, or due to sodium loss from the kidneys. To evaluate low serum sodium, we first determine the volume status of the patient. Is there too much fluid, too little fluid, or a normal amount of fluid? To make this determination, we use the patient's history and physical examination, as well as the laboratory tests we order. The lab tests include plasma osmolality and urine osmolality. The osmolality of a fluid is related to the concentration of all the different particles dissolved in the fluid. We also measure the urine sodium concentration. And we evaluate the other tests of the comprehensive metabolic profile. We obtain a urinalysis and a complete blood count, a CBC. The causes of high serum sodium include osmotic diarrhea. Osmotic diarrhea occurs when the intestines are unable to digest foods and the undigested food draws water into the colon causing diarrhea. High serum sodium can occur with glycosuria. This is loss of glucose in the urine which draws water along with it. This can occur when the blood sugar is very high in central diabetes insipidus, the serum sodium is high because the kidneys cannot absorb water adequately because the level of antidiuretic hormone is too low. In nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, the level of antidiuretic hormone is adequate, but the kidneys are unable to respond to it normally and so don't absorb enough water from the urine. Thirst is a powerful mechanism that usually kicks in when the serum sodium starts to get high. However, if a person is too weak to drink, the serum sodium can continue to rise. Rarely, the thirst mechanism itself is damaged and the person doesn't drink enough fluid. The evaluation of a high serum sodium is similar to the evaluation of a low serum sodium. We determine the volume status of the patient using the history and physical examination and the lab tests. And we order the same lab tests that we would for a low serum sodium. Well, that's it for this visit. I hope you found it useful and thank you for watching.